Welcome back to our Habitat Gardening short film series. Today we're going to talk about one of my favourite subjects, Backyard Feathered Friends. I'd like to acknowledge the people of the Kulin Nation as the traditional owners of the land that we are filming on today and pay my respects to the Elders past, present and emerging. When I first moved into Point Cook, there was nothing but dirt for kilometres because it was a relatively new estate. But I knew Wyndham was rich in bird life. So I had a blank canvas and this was an opportunity to create a habitat garden, something that would bring the birds back and would allow them to also stop over. I've been in Point Cook for almost 20 years now and the birds that used to arrive originally were the pest birds such as Indian miners and sparrows. But as the suburbs have greened up and the habitats have been developed, I've noticed a significant reduction in the pest birds and a dramatic increase in the native birds. I have now logged over 25 native bird species in my garden in the last few years, and it excites me to see what else there is to arrive. The native birds that are now permanent residents in my garden are ravens, magpie larks, wattle birds, crested pigeons, rainbow lorikeets, willy wagtails, and lots and lots of New Holland honey eaters. Then I have the migrants, the birds that pass through for a quick feed or a drink or just a rest as they either make their way to our coast or head inland. These migrants have been various cuckoos and pardalets as well as the superb fairy wrens, silver eyes, little wattle bird, white plumed honey eaters, thornbills, restless flycatchers, and musk lorikeets. And sometimes I get a huge surprise to find these rippers in my garden. I've had the white faced heron appear for a number of days as it was scoping for fish in one of my ponds. And then I also had a sacred kingfisher late last year that stuck around for the day and perched itself in one of my eucalypts. This year, the biggest surprise by far was actually seeing a Nankeen night heron in one of my trees just above my pond in my yard. It was beautiful and it hung around for the majority of the day only to find that it had disappeared by morning. These birds are not something that you see quite easily so to have it in my garden was really quite special. Because I have so many layers to my garden, I can cater to a large variety of birds. And I have no doubt that as they fly over, they see this green wedge and they simply just cannot resist coming over to have a look, a feed or a drink. To encourage birds into our garden, we need to have a good variety of plants and trees and we need to look at heights, barks, textures and also blossoms. And don't forget to include ground covers when you're considering your plant selection. Many of our local birds are omnivorous and they thrive on both nectar and also insects. The flowers that we have produce the nectar and the nectar attracts the insects. And by having this combination, we create a complete meal for our native birds. When you are selecting your flowering plants, have a look at when they actually flower. You may be able to choose plants that will flower at different stages so that you don't have them all flowering in one go. And this means you are more likely to have birds come throughout the entire year and very likely also choose to stay around. You might have noticed that our native birds have various preferences in regards to the environment they live in. Some of our birds like to be up high where it's nice and safe and they eat the blossoms and they peel bark off the trees. Birds such as the lorikeets and the ravens and cockatoos prefer to be up nice and high. And then we have the birds that tend to hover around the middle and they go up and down quite a fair bit along our trees. These are the rainbow lorikeets, which are a bit more versatile. 
the magpie larks and magpies, as well as the wattle birds and various honey eaters. We then have the birds that prefer to be down low, and they tend to be the fast birds, those that can make a quick getaway if they feel a bit threatened. There are lots of flowering shrubs to cater to these birds. New Holland honey eaters are often in the shrubs licking nectar out of the plants, and superb fairy wrens are often looking for insects amongst all those shrubs. The last group are the ground dwellers, and these are the birds that forage around the grasses and in the ground covers looking for grubs and insects. Birds like crested pigeons and thornbills usually tend to prefer being on the ground and will only take flight when frightened. When you're looking for the taller trees, consider eucalypts, wattles and casuarinas. You can now find dwarf eucalypts and they only grow to about 5 metres but they still produce magnificent canopies and flowers and there are native nurseries in Victoria that specialise in these trees. Wattles too are fast growing and will achieve their full height within a couple years so you don't have to wait a decade for your trees to grow. For smaller trees, look at grevilleas and bottle brushes, as well as hop bushes, kangaroo apple, and smaller varieties of casuarina. They both pack in a lot when it comes to flowers and colour, and they also tend to grow quite quickly. I keep coming back to grevilleas because they are a remarkable genus with so many wonderful species. Their flowers are a definite attraction to so many birds because of the nectar they produce. They flower profusely and some species flower all year round. Grevilleas range enormously in colour, size and texture and can add vibrancy to your habitat garden. When looking for smaller shrubs, think again about grevilleas as well as emu bushes, many of the corrie varieties and cassias. And don't forget, you can get a good list of plants, their sizes and when they flower in the Habitat Heroes booklet found on the Wyndham City Council website. The next level down are the grasses, flaxes, the salt bushes and the general ground covers. Consider dianellas and various native grasses such as kangaroo grass, wallaby grass, tussock grass and the likes. And salt bushes also come in a huge variety and the birds love feasting on their delicious berries when they are fruiting. Plants that are great for nesting in are those that knit up tightly, making them safe havens. Consider creepers such as Hardenberger, Clematis, Canidia or native jasmine. These grow up best against lattice or a fence as they continue to grow intertwining along the way. And these plants are a perfect habitat for birds such as the superb fairy wrens and New Holland honey eaters. Not all birds build nests and some prefer hollow logs such as the parrots and the owls. Here you can see my example where I have created nest boxes and installed them in my gum trees. In the bush it takes over a hundred years for a hollow log to develop in a gum tree. So this option allows them to nest while we wait for our trees to mature. As you can see, it's not one size fits all. So really consider a variety of plants in heights, textures, flowers, and what they can provide for each of these birds. Birds get very thirsty, so it is important they can have access to water all the time, especially when the weather starts to warm up. On those really hot days when the temperature gets into the high 30s, if birds cannot access water, they do die as they dehydrate quite quickly. Having bird baths in your garden can be life-saving to our birds.
sadly, something that affects our birds quite deeply is their vulnerability when it comes to cats. So please do your best to keep your cats locked inside during the night and on your property during the day. For more information on this, you can also look at the campaign endorsed by RSPCA and Zoos Vic called Safe Cats, Safe Wildlife. Well, I hope you enjoyed this short film series on how to encourage birds to come into your garden. And you've got lots of ideas on what you can plant to encourage them. Stay tuned as our final video will be all about how to bring in the insects, the butterflies and the bees.